Uh, basically, looking at your windows, what I look for when I uh, come in to do a consultant with churches to find out the condition of the windows. With your windows, you can see by looking straight down uh, the different problems that you're starting to affect the windows because of the weight, uh, the age, uh, all of these rebars here that hold the window nice and straight. The wires that are soldered to the seams of the window itself, all of these are lead seams that hold the glass together. The, the tie wires, they call them, wrap around the bars. When they start to break off and pop off of the bars, you can see the window start to, to uh, 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 basically bow in and out. Right along this edge, you can see where this bar right here it's uh, bowed in probably a good inch. So all these wires are loose and popping off. And what's gonna happen uh, eventually is that once all those wires pop off, the weight of that glass will cause this to bow in or out even worse. And it'll be to the point you can pop a piece of glass right out. At that point, you better get it fixed right away or you're gonna end up losing the window and it'll crack the glass. So what I do is I come in, take out the glass. They come out in sections. Anything up there in window frames is one solid window usually, unless it's over three or four feet where it will separate in different areas underneath a, uh, one of the tie rods there. It hides the seam. And they come out in sections, uh, like the top part there, right below Jesus' shoulders is a breaking point right there where that top piece would come out. The next piece would probably be right about here and right here. And that would come out as a separate window. What I do at that point, take it to my studio, number every piece. Every piece is a separate piece and divide with the, the, the lines of the lead is a separate piece. And number it all, make a clear template of that. Otherwise, if you don't have a template, you'll never get it back together. That way you know where every piece goes when you rebuild it. All new lead came, all new cement. Underneath the lead also, and you can see in spots where the cement has popped out. And that's another sign that you need to repair this window. The main thing though is the, the straightness of that window. And if you stand right here, you can see the problems you got with it all the way up. Even some of the top ones up there. Usually about 75, 80 years they all need to be rebuilt. Every church out there has, has this problem with lead came. And uh, it's just, it don't last forever. So that's, that's a big problem with uh, uh, the stained glass in itself is eventually the, the wires pop off, you got the weight of the glass in the sun. Of course that weight, the, the solder or the, the lead came gets soft and the weight of that glass will make that window bow out, in or out. It's just a, a major problem. Uh, this one here, you can see that's also dented, and these usually are always a problem. Any window that opens up, and this one does, is that people will slam these. The, the hinges get gooey and, and hard to manipulate, and uh, they're harder to open and close, and they'll end up slamming them. Somebody has put a hand right here, you can see it's pushed in right there and even the, the lead has popped off of the, the seams right there. And there's a few cracks in there too. Um, as I went around, and why somebody had asked, uh, or Brian had told me, uh, somebody wanted to know why I only choose the six windows. When I looked at them, and they were the, the worst of the bunch, he told me to uh, look at the windows and, and pick out the worst ones. Those would probably be the ones you'd want done right away. And that's what I did, and that's why I picked the ones I did and uh, really left the others. But as you can look at them, and I have, they all need work eventually. You know, you may want to just do one at a time, one every six months, one every year. I can work with that. I can only build so many at a time anyway. So it's a... Uh, a year-long, two-year project. I've worked on churches for four years, and it's just uh, whatever the church can afford and how they want to go about it. I'm open for, for uh, any way that you can afford it and want to do it is the way I work with you. So, But 
uh, some of these, yeah, they're in worse shape than others. And another thing I noticed that, especially this one on the outside, the wood framework is in bad need too. Uh, it looks like it's deteriorated up on top in areas. And that's another thing I do. I'm a cabinet maker by trade and I do all woodworking, framework, all of that. So that would fit right in on, on what we do here. But all of these windows come out from the inside. Uh, and since you do have storms, uh, I wouldn't have to really uh, cover them up. I could insulate, of course, in the winter time, uh, and probably just take out a couple as I go. So I wouldn't have to take them all out or six of them or whatever, maybe one or two at a time, or whatever your budget you know, uh, will uh, cover. But you can see up there, there's a few too that are bowed in and out that I would probably wanna, this here on the end, that one there has a slight bow, the far right one, uh, the arch, the, the one in the, uh, next to it uh, in the center there has a slight bow in it too. And I think on the other side, there were some that were pretty bad off too. And the, the door in the back or the, by the back door there, that diamond patterned one, that had some issues with the two I think was in the list that I had uh, in the proposal. Yeah, any of these that open, you can see the cracks in them where it's, you know, you put your hand there maybe even on this bar and uh, slamming these. And all it really takes is just clean these hinges up and uh, kind of grease them up and that will work a lot better. And you can see the lead here is really right there. That lead there is loose. It's even, it even moves right there. And, and uh, the cement underneath it is just deteriorated. The cementing process, after you re-lead the whole window, all new lead came and I'll show you. I brought some lead to show you what new looks like compared to old. And uh, after it's all soldered, all the joints, the lead comes in six foot lengths and uh, you just cut it to size, it's very pliable, you can bend it around all these shapes and everything. And then all the connection points where they meet is where you solder it front and back. And then once that's all done, the whole window, top and bottom, then you make up a cement uh, of 50% uh, paint thinner and 50% boiled linseed oil with whiting powder. And whiting powder is pulverized limestone and they've used this for centuries. It's the historical way of uh, cementing windows. And uh, you make it, you mix that up into like a cookie dough material and uh, you force it by hand underneath, underneath all the lead came. There's a little lip that the glass fits in it a little bit loose, but enough to shove in the cement. You do the whole front side, flip it over, do the back side, and then clean it up and after that dries, it's just like cement in the glass that holds it in the lead and keep it from rattling. It even waterproofs it because years ago they never had storm windows and they had to waterproof them. So that was one of the reasons, but the main reason I use it for is the historical value of it and also it strengthens the glass and the lead. And that's what you want for another hundred years or more. And that's, uh, that's the way everybody does it and it's, it's uh, written that way for historical value to keep it true. Yeah, this one right here along here, you can see where it's bowed out here. It's inset here, and it's got a slight bow out right over this rebar here. And if you look at it, you can definitely see that. All of this here, uh, any painted faces, hands, feet, uh, animal faces, that's all hand painted glass. And that's uh, every color is fired into the glass. Any of the medallions up on top, the wheat or the grapes, that's all hand painted design. And uh, I've repaired that as well, brought in a, a glass painter. I do some painting myself, uh, some of the more detailed things, faces especially. I don't have that art uh, myself, so I bring in an artist that does that and worked with me on many jobs if that needs to be replaced. 
usually I use all the same glass unless something is, is uh, fractured to the point that it's just so many pieces you just can't use it. I'll try and match it the best I can. That's usually a problem with, with trying to match glass is to get the exact color. In daylight, it, or at nighttime, just the surface of the glass may look a certain color, but once the light comes through it, it's totally different. And to get both of those to match is usually really difficult. But there's still some companies out there that have been in business over 120 years that are still making the glass. And uh, I haven't come to a point where it's been impossible. I've, and that's always up to the church members when I have to bring in a co couple of samples uh, for you to, to take a look at. It's always up to the church members of what I use and, and where it goes. So you're always on board as far as any change of glass or any design element or anything. That's always up to the church to decide that. That's something I will not uh, do on my own without your... And the middle one, well, the one there on, uh, straight up above me, the arched one, uh, that has a slight bow in it as well. These aren't really too bad up on the very top. This one is pretty bad, and these here that open, you can see where those are indented there, and this one especially. Any cracks in the glass, I'll just take another piece of lead and just put that in there. I mean, you just have another seam. A lot of times, uh, you can see in different windows, the way when they built them, they must have cracked the glass. Instead of replacing it, they used what they had and just put in another seam. Nobody really knows the difference. And even different colors I've seen that uh, while they were building a window, this one in water time I'm working on is they put in a totally different color uh, in this one stairwell window that just really didn't even fit. Nobody even in the congregation even seen it until I brought it to their attention. I seen it right away, but it was amazing they even used that color. But uh, yeah, it's and up at the corner of this one. The corner is there, I can see they bow in, there's a dip right there. Yeah, right on that top bar, above that top bar. But this one over here, I think, is in the worst shape. How are these little ones here? Oh yeah, let me take a look at those. This one here, for sure. And a couple up there were, yeah, this one here. That's got a real good bow in that one, right above that bottom rebar, between the top rebar and the, the bottom one. And the center one has a bow in it. And this one here, you can definitely see that. It, it, it goes right straight back. So is the glass actually bowed or is it just a... It's the lead came that forces it to bend in the came. So it's pliable. So you can actually get when you're done, the glass is actually straight again? Oh, yes. I mean, it's not the glass is bowled over the years and the, like wood, you know? R right. No, the glass will straighten right out. Yep, I lay it right on my workbench on a workboard, which is three-quarter inch plywood, and you build it right on that. So it, it's all totally straight, and it's the lead that will fluctuate. I can uh, show you this past this piece of lead around. Uh, new lead. And it's what I use, usually the common lead they use is uh, a quarter inch wide. It's an H pattern if you look at the end of it. The glass fits in on both sides. And uh, it's quarter inch by, by uh, quarter inch wide by three sixteenths. Glass is about an eighth inch. So there's room, a little room for play in there for cementing on top and bottom. And it's very pliable. You can bend it around anything really. And then this is a piece of old that is deteriorated like yours, and uh, you can see some cement still in there that is real fragile, it's ready to pop out. That's still pliable, but it's in a bad need to be replaced. So you wanna pass those around. Look at these down here. This one here. Yeah, we don't look too bad. Yeah, 
this one looks pretty good and you know you can see the cement is already coming out here how it's seeping through the sides and any light air any light coming along where the lead is pulled away from the glass and on the outside here too you can see the lead is deteriorating there and even though that you know it may not have a big bow in it the fact is that the age and the cement problem here and here you can see how it's seeping out of there and hot and cold fluctuation that eventually they're going to need it maybe not this year next year maybe the year after but the thing is they're ready that one ain't in bad shape at all excuse me yeah, and that's in a, a regular heavy-duty metal frame there, too. And it probably has a better mechanism than these here, these older ones. So that, it probably saved there, it was easier to close. You didn't have to slam them like that, and then you have a chance of slipping off that bar onto the glass and you break it or crack it. Yeah, it's the cement that is the issue that it's starting to come out. And there's, these wires are all pretty good. And they are protected. You do have storms, I see, on them. See, like this, when they were building this window, they must have cracked it because they put a seam here. You know, where they don't have one here. And sometimes, you know, if it's, uh, um, I've seen where, you know, they might, other artists, they might just make it where it's uh, equal on both sides. I don't want to do that because it takes away from the originality of the window, but, um, some have suggested, well, why don't you just put a, another piece there and make it equal? But, you know, why, uh, why change it if it don't need to be? <coughs> yeah, it's just the cement problem with these. They're in pretty good shape. Eventually, they're going to need it. You know, you don't ever want to see the cement starting to seep out of there because once it falls out, then the glass becomes loose. Here, I'd put a seam in there. Any cracks, that would uh, take care of the problem there. And just add a couple more. Here's a crack, crack there, crack there, cracks here. And that could be done when they built it. I mean, it's very fragile, the glass. Uh, I don't usually crack it when I put it back together. And, and even the way they, they cut the glass back then, they didn't have the tools I have now. But uh, most all of it's hand cut. And I do the same way, hand cut it all. But I can grind it to fit um, where they didn't have that. They used, used it after they cut it, especially points are hard to cut. And a lot of times you'll see where they, where they had to put a seam in where they cracked it. Like here is a crack at that point in there. And then when they let it, if they wrap it too tight, they'll crack the glass too. That one ain't in too bad a shape. And that one looks pretty good too. I think these are okay for the time being. Eventually they will need it, you know, because of the cement problem seeping out there. You know, there's a bow right on this edge here. It's dipped in like right there in the center. And there I can see it too. And up on top, this whole outside border there, it's tipped in. So this one is probably the worst out of, out of the four of them that uh, has an issue. And the cement, of course, here is really bad.
Any questions? I have a question about, um, have you worked with a lot of places that have rope grants to replace steam glass? Uh, basically, we, we've done a lot of uh, not, not writing the grants. I think there is one right now that's writing a grant. That's uh, the Bethlehem Lutheran in Sheboygan. Okay. They did a fundraiser uh, last year, I think, to raise some of the funds, and usually they, they'll do a two or three year fundraiser. St. John's in Watertown has done that. Um, another good thing that uh, we did, uh, Jim and I, we restored a 115 year old chapel in Janesville, Wisconsin, some years back, uh, 44 stained glass windows, and we did a uh, sponsorship with the windows where families could donate a certain amount for say half of the window or maybe a bottom section and then for that they would have the family's name and a loved one's name or the family name and a, a gold plaque brass plaque you know that would go on to the wall next to it or whatever and we did all 44 windows that way and raised uh, about 40 grand to do that and it really uh, took care of the cost of the restoration. So that's, that's a possibility. Grants I know are uh, sometimes they're quick, sometimes it's a long drawn out thing and you know how long it would take I'm not sure. You know like this I would I would probably work on one window at a time anyway so you know um, you got plenty of time to do that you know. It, it, it's going to take, you know, to do, say, the, the Christ there, that window there, that whole window, probably four months to do that, five months. You know, so it, it's not like it's a, a fast job where, you know, you're going to run out of time and not get the grant money. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Jim, you've written grants, right, for different organizations. What is the, the time frame of a grant? A year. Yeah. So we could do this in four parts then too. We could do this window first. Oh, sure. Yeah, you could start with the smallest one. It, it really doesn't matter. It just depends on, you know, your budget and, and uh, which one you want done first, you know. Well, the way you're saying right now, the cell phone sounds the worst because it's the outside too. Yes. Has to be done. Yeah, the, the woodwork, that can be done uh, a little later. Like I say, the, the windows come out from the inside. So what's on the outside is good for now. But I think eventually, uh, looking at that wood, what I could see, you'd probably want to get that repaired. So that would come into where you had in your contract a 25% contingency fee? Yes. Oh, unless you want a proposal just for that. I didn't price that out in itself. I'd probably want to take a better look at it and uh, see what it needs uh, other than, you know, uh, relying on the contingency. That there might be more involved with that than 25%, I'm not sure. Well, he gave that to us and with this bill, now, like he just said, that's not set in stone yet but that would be a six thousand dollars that he's got kind of budgeted for contingency in this right now yes what that means is if i run into problems that i can't see when i go to take out that window and that wood frame inside there behind the window or on each side of the window is all rotted and i didn't see that and i didn't put that in the budget the proposal then i'm going to have to eat that and that could run into thousands. If, if it comes out where that whole frame is shot, then I put a contingency in 25% for unforeseen expense. And it's always been approval to the church members that we would discuss this and make sure everybody's on the same page before I just send you a bill. But I have to cover myself because I don't know what, what how much damage, if any, there's there. You know, and that don't always happen. A lot of times I never touch that con contingency. But you're being safe for yourself. Yes, you have to. And the, the, the way prices are, you know, it's crazy. It, it just, you know, you put a proposal in and three weeks later it's, you know, a third more. And then the insurance, you said, 
in the proposal. Can you tell them about that? My insurance uh, covers me for two million damage to liability. Anything that happens here at the church that I'm covered, my people are covered. So that will not fall onto you, and it will be written in your name. And that's through a company in Sheboygan, Acuity Insurance out of Sheboygan. I've been with them uh, 20, 22 years. Never had a claim with them. So is there any other questions? Uh, you pretty much answered everyone that I had on here. Which ones were the bad ones I had? How long would it take to fix? He answered that. Uh, which ones are the worst and where would we start? Well, I guess we would start on the salt one if we have a council meeting and now that will be that first Tuesday in March. Okay. So we can get uh, this together. Marsha? What does it cost to do it? What are we looking at? If I ask, I can Well, here, you want, this is your proposal here. This south window here, right here, he's got a start to finish of $10,224.70 on this window. That's the big one of Christ at the Rock. Pardon me? Christ at the Rock, the, the main window there, the biggest one. And I have the sizes there too to tell which is which. And the north one here would be about the same? It's, yeah, it is the same. It's identical size. It doesn't matter about the pieces, it's about the square footage. And let's see here. North side, uh, 52 by 52 inches by 8 foot height. That's 36, well, 36 square feet. That is a, that one. Right. And here, the north side church lower windows that open one right, one right and left on large center window. That's 18 inches high, 24 inches long. That's three square foot. Each window would be $885. And uh, to get out the big one here, I would set up scaffolding for the day and pull that out, and since you have storms, uh, I could insulate that if you'd want it insulated, but you do have protection there. The glass is only eighth inch anyway, so you know that's really the insulation value is the outside storm window and the stained glass. But I would put a uh, foam board in there or whatever just for uh, extra. Uh, and the scaffolding are just set up for the day. Once I have the window out and secured, then I would uh, take out the scaffolding and you'd be back to normal until I'm ready to, to bring it back. But also the wood trim, any wood trim that is damaged or uh, breakage, trying to get the window out that is included in that, uh, that would be covered as well. I will uh, match that the best I can with the wood color and type and uh, reinstall that as well. So that would be part of it too, anything damaged that is uh, in the process of taking that window out. It's the contingency that is un unnoticed behind the window or on each side is the things that I cannot see that would be part of that contingency. But any wood trim uh, around that is all covered as well. Was there a church approved to do like one section? How busy are you? I mean, what are you booked out? Or how, how is it booked Excuse me? Uh, probably March, April, I'd be into starting this project, uh, you know, and like I say, it'd probably be four or five months after that that I could get her done. Excuse me? Yes, yes, I would, uh, well, the way the contract is written, it's for the six windows to start with. And that was uh, in thirds, I believe, three payments? Uh, right here, and this one I got is 50% down and 50% up. Right, okay. Right, and this, this one here. But I could work with it if you wanted to do thirds or quarters. We could do that. So the six windows are that center, that center, and the two buildings? And that, one, and that one in that hallway. Yeah, so one in the hallway, the two largest, and then a couple of these smaller ones that open for this proposal. And this was based on the worst, not all of them. And that was one of the questions why. 
you yeah. know, was because the, I was told to pick out the worst of all of them. I, I didn't, oh, the total amount for the six? That's uh, $6.90. Plus, that, you know, all the contingency fees. We don't know that. Yeah, if that's, if I that. Just, I did the quick math at home and it came to like $6,300. So I just rounded it to 6000 Said out to use guys so you knew what that contingency fee would be. So we're looking, let's say 6,000, even we'd be 32,000 if. For the six windows. For the for, for contingency fee. And in the contingency, that might just cover, you know, you only need it maybe for half of the window, you know, of the wood trim or rotted area. It might not be the whole 6,000 to 25%. It might just be, you know, four or five pieces of wood. I'm not going to hit you with that whole, you know, 25% if it's only half of the window and wood trim I need. How many windows is this considered? That one uh, is basically, uh, well, those up there, each one in a wood frame is a window. It's in its own. But when you say six windows? It would be uh, uh, yeah. some of those arches and diamonds up there. That whole thing? And the one big one is one, one full window. Okay. Uh, Christ with the one below it. That's one complete window there. It doesn't open. It's twenty-six thousand probably for this window. No. For both of them. For all six. Yeah. Pastor? Sure. Um, you mentioned sometimes needing to repaint windows. Is that something you would anticipate needing to do? I don't see a problem with uh, all the glass that's painted looks uh, a one shape. And that is something that, uh, yeah, you, you try and keep what you have. To, to have these repainted. Working with painted glass to keep what we have here and, and reuse it all. Okay. So, so when it's done, it will look exactly the same? Oh yeah, for sure. No change except all the seams are going to be bright silver. Okay. They'll look brand new. The glass itself will look brand new. It cleans up very well. And there's 30 steps that I run through my restoration project when I restore a window. You can go on my YouTube and, and see how to restore a stained glass window. I've videotaped it every step. So you need 50% done? <laughs> I can work with you if, uh, if you can't arrange that. We can do it in quarters. Well, let's just, as just, long as he's here, let's just say the south window has to be you know, if that's the worst. In right. Sight. Right. So we're looking at uh, ten thousand two hundred and twenty-four dollars. So let's divide that in half, make ten thousand easier. That's five grand. We'd have to come up for him to get up here and get it started. That's just more doable than like all six. Right. You know, yes. I. I contract well. Contract, so it's like a little bit more doable for our site for preparation. Oh, for sure. Yep. Because I talked to Marsha today and Kristen about some other things we got thinking of and. I'll let you know further once I found get some more numbers together, but I think that's also a doable way we can get it. But that's it's coming. It's we're we're working on it. So, um, yeah, I, we could probably do in the budget right now. You know, we can start with one window and get it done instead of doing all of them all at once. We can make the steps and work down the road. Is that price going to change over the years, or will stay the same price and go up, or what's going to fluctuate? Right. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. It could because the price, my prices keep going up. And it's gone up 50 bucks in the last two months. So I like to, you know, get it locked in as soon as possible, especially the supplies, and get that put in stock so they can't raise it no more.
But yeah, once you give the deposit, you're locked in at that price, whether it costs me more or not. The only thing that would change would be the contingency of unforeseen damage. And it might not be the whole 25%. Any other questions? You got any questions for us? I am just that uh, it'd be a pleasure to work on them. They're beautiful windows. Every window I see, I just, uh, you know, it's just in awe that I love stained glass. I've been doing it for 40 years and every one is so unique and beautiful. Well, I'm just doing the math up here quick, guys. If, if we want to do the whole, all the windows here to keep them updated, if we give you, like you got here, $13,000, would that lock this price in? And if we could do like that window, the next window, that one, could you get us the supplies for that and keep them? Sure. Yeah, now would be the time to buy it because it, it keeps going up. <coughs> Any other questions? Well, do you all feel the answer? Feel good about it? Feel bad about it? I'd like your input right now. I'd say go for it. It's got to get done. <coughs> the longer we wait, the more damage is going to happen, the more it's going to cost us. So uh, it's if, as you let it go, it's going to do something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we'll have council meeting then. We'll get it voted in and uh, we'll get it started. Great. You agree with all? Okay. And another thing I do too is I send pictures of the steps. So you can watch as I, as I proceed in the rebuilding of your windows. Brian, one thing is about this month, we, you know, we may not be able to do anything because we have to wait for this grant to be started. Right, we well, check our chances for the grant. we'll check into that as soon as we can. And like I say, he can't get started now until March or April. Well, March is around the corner, but let's just say April. Right, but if it takes a year to get the grant, can we start it before we get the grant money? This is what we brought up at the meeting. Like, yeah. yeah, well, we don't know. We're going to have to check into that one kind of quick. But what if we, uh, Jeff? Well, we do have that money in the CD. Right. Use, right. I, I would be in agreement to use that to get the project started. So we can't, we can always build that fund back up later on. Right, Jeff. As long as we start touching it, the date refuses because we already started the project for the grant money. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that'll be good. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Well, well, give us, we got two weeks yet. I know you're busy. Uh, we'll, we'll do the best we can right now to find that answer all for you. I guess we'll just have to push on that answer and we'll have to go from there. Maybe. Maybe we can uh, start this window. What if we get the grant? Then we do the other other ones. You know that we can get started and lock that price in. That we can check on that. Rick. And I was going to say too, is this a big deal to rush it? Say April or March, or April, just to make sure that grant is fulfilled all correctly. If we have to start in June or July, I mean, is that crucial? I guess that's your answer. Uh, what was the question again? Sorry. If we'd have to wait a few months to start the project, we're talking like March or April, if we'd have to wait until June or July to get, oh, the, to get the grant to cover. To make sure that yeah, once you start started, the grant has to be completed before you start, right? I think the, the big thing would be uh, to get the, the materials locked in for the price and then okay. starting it at any point.
start with one and you are able to, we are able to see for the church, uh, it's never going to hurt to have one done. And I'm not saying we don't get a grant, <coughs> we just make a choice whether or not we do the other way. Um, as far as non-basic <coughs> grants, there's corporate grants, there's all sorts of grants. So we're looking at one the other day that was a, it's a Lutheran grant. You know, it's, it's just, it's <coughs> I don't have a lot of answers. Yeah. It's just when you deal with the government. Never takes, never gets it done fast. Process. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes they promise you something and you're not going to get it. Right. <laughs> Is it helpful knowing that you mentioned that I didn't have a grant to give that name to Kim? <coughs> Uh, Watertown, they did a fundraiser. Uh, I think the Bethlehem uh, Lutheran uh, in Sheboygan, I think they might be applying. Right. I mean, those are places that, that now that I heard that, I mean, I could call their ask them. What's your uh, group channel? Uh, Go to my Facebook, that's where I list all my restoration, most of them, and I think it's also, well, on my website, you could get there too, to the uh, YouTube channel, and some of the uh, videos are on my website with a link to YouTube. So my, I'll give you some business cards, I don't have a lot of them here, but, uh, and you could write this down too for the uh, Facebook. Uh, page. It's uh, Richard Thomas Snyder. I know if you type that in, there's hundreds of them. Look for the one I'm standing next to a three foot high stained glass window. That's me. And that'll, uh, there's hundreds of pictures on that of all the past and present and uh, lots of different windows I've restored and built custom for churches and furniture and all kinds of things. But my website is the numeral one glass impressions dot com and that has a lot of information with links to YouTube and uh, other things connected with what I do. I should have brought a bunch of cards, but here's a few you can hand out. I might have some in the van too. Yeah, there's a few here. So any other questions? And everything is slower too because people aren't all back to work and things take extra long. Not to find fault with it, but it's the world we live in now. Yep. Foundation that one was possibly a possibility. And we were just brainstorming. We were looking into like 
the meeting here. You know, there's just a different one. But the National Fund for Secret Police was that was the government one. And the police. So that like you had said, um, Mr. that maybe that those might be more difficult. So um, but I think the Secret Lutheran Foundation is a real thing too. And here my friend sent something with church repair grants. I mean, I, so we're just really, um, you know, I talked about especially if you have historical significance, that kind of thing. They also, a lot of people want to know what are you doing in the community, and if they want to give you, they'll give you money, but that needs to show what are you doing in the community. So there's, there's a lot to look at. And like this one, was, this one is due February 28th. <laughs> so she sent me. So we may not get it this year. Maybe we'll get one next year. You know, those are things that we just have to. So once you apply for a grant, does it end until you get it, like a year or two? Or how does it work? You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, for example, like you said, summer to a different time. So first of all, you have to do is you have to narrow down what we would really apply to our church. And then, um, you know, some of the grants are going to require a lot of statistics about the history of your church. I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into it from there. And um, so, just kind of one step at a time. I'm thinking, you know, a lot of people when Pastor and I were here, we were here in the summer. What's that? It's all kind of dropped down. That's what you were here and did that, wouldn't you? Yeah, you told us, told David about it. So, this may be a future. Yeah, it's a big surprise to a lot of churches, you know, and they know that they got a problem. They just can't. We look back in the records. They put these on in 1903 wow. for $6,300. Wow. Big price difference now. Well, but in that time, that was a lot of money. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And the records who did it? Who did the, the windows locally or Milwaukee? Or? This is what they built from where the church was in here. That was put in there, and uh, in the minutes it says, every man will do his work to his ability. Yeah. Well, you know, with any work on the outside, anybody that would want to, you know, the future for the wood framework, would want to 